If you've just joined us, you're watching Newslink on DSTV Channel 403. Now, the city of Tswana is cautioning residents against an RDP, RDP house application scam. This after a message was sent out on social media inviting RDP house applicants from 1996 to 2022 to check their applications and collect their house keys. MMC for Housing in the city of Tswane, Abel Dow, joins us now to discuss this for further. Mr. Dow, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Before we actually get to the scam that's currently doing the rounds, you know, we all have an, a general appreciation of the housing issues. There are backlogs, of course, but I didn't think it was as bad as people who had applied in the 90s, still waiting to be allocated houses. What have been the challenges there? Good morning, Fundo, and good morning to viewers at home. Um, look, um, it really has been a difficult one. Obviously, we would know that um, housing is a provincial government competence, um, and therefore the National Housing um, um, Needs Register resides with the province and the national government. Look, there's been a number of challenges, I think, from the conceptualization of how we were going to deliver houses to the masses of our people. There's always going to be difficult in that. I think the planning, but as well, a number of dynamics and availability of Arab of, of, of land conducive for human settlement. Um, you know, um, at the beginning, um, you know, a number of administrative challenges, people moving around, um, seeking better opportunities. And with time, that is why in 2008, there was the a program which consolidated the National Housing List Register to try and make sure that it quantifies the problem. Unfortunately, even as far back as then, really, we did not really make headways because I do think that um, because of the dynamics between the two spheres of government, and I think it's one of those challenges that we really, 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 really need to get to the bottom of it. I think the minister at some point, um, the previous minister, um, Minister Sisulu, said something very profound to say one of the things is that probably government had underestimated the task and the enormity of the task of delivering houses to everyone. And I think we needed to have a different approach, which is what I think government is doing at this stage to try and make sure that there is rapid land release in terms of service spends. And therefore, you do go through that. And once you are able to do that, then at times when you come back, you find that other people could actually build houses for themselves and we can then move forward. But indeed, the problem is quite big. Mm -hmm. You were quoted in one newspaper saying that part of the problem is the mushrooming of the informal settlements and you're now looking to embark on a verification process. How will that work? Look, it is a big problem and one needs to, you know, cannot obviously take a, a very, a very, a very un understanding stance if there is a word like that when it comes to that because people are frustrated we're talking about people who've applied for houses since 1996 um you know the early 2000 1999 and at the end of the day when people are finding themselves with the kind of economic um, situation that they find themselves in where they can no longer afford the rent and all these many challenges that they face um with unemployment this being so high therefore it pushes people to then go out and grab land which we don't encourage and i think the slow pace of government in delivering houses becomes one of those problems that we need to, add, to, to to acknowledge and make sure that we turn that around. And turn that around needs to happen at local government level. We need to make sure that we protect these pieces of land where people can erect checks and, 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 and invade land. And that has not really been done as well as it should have been. I think more proper budgeting needed to be done because in the long run, it's more costlier to have informal settlements than it is to protect that land. But equally, we need to fast track the delivery of services and of RDP houses where we are building houses and making sure that the projects that we run run actually efficiently, effectively, and we turn things around. So there has been a number of, of, of challenges. Contractors, at times due to inflationary pressures and all these issues, then they would abandon projects. The quantum would not be enough. I mean, you had a, a, a very big issue over the past few years of business forums stopping projects and the informal 30%. So it's a myriad of challenges that we have always faced. Um, but I do think that with experience, as we look back at what has challenged us, we should be confident that we can turn the situation around. But it is really something that needs all of us to put our shoulders to the wheel. Mm -hmm. But when we interact with would-be beneficiaries on the ground, sometimes they also bring another problem to, 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 to the discussion and say that at times you do see that the RGP houses have been completed. They're empty. 
nobody goes in and they don't understand why they haven't been handed over to them. What would be the issue in such instances where they would be driving by and we would physically see that there are houses that are empty, but people are still living in shacks? Are you, um, there's a number of challenges. One of those specifically is the beneficiary administration, like I said, um, finding the right people. Obviously, if someone, if you've got a, a, a houses that are completed, um, you first need to verify if the condition and the circumstances of those beneficiaries are still the same, that they are still a person who needs to benefit according to the subsidy scheme and the policy. And therefore, when you go through that process, it's a process that requires a bit of time to make sure that every everyone who occupies those houses is actually the rightful beneficiary. And as you go through that, the unfortunate part is that before long, you find people invading those houses. One of the biggest problems, and we need to face it head on as well as society, is that there is a, a degree of lawlessness in our country. I mean, for the longest of time, um, there would be people who work as mafia to literally target these houses. And as soon as these houses are complete, they'll wait a week or two and start putting people in, charging the rent, doing all sorts of things and it becomes difficult then intergovernmentally to work with the subs and the metropolis and all these um, 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 challenges that you have and interdependencies to remove these people and therefore you sit with the problems that you sit with. So it's a multifaceted challenge but it's one where at this stage where we are we have obviously um, gained a, a bit of valuable experience and we are now approaching it differently like I said when houses need to be built I think it goes without saying that you need to identify beneficiaries beforehand, once the pro even before projects start, and finalize those so that when uh, Abel Tau knows that I'm waiting for my house at 11, 20, 11, old Bosch, it is at this stage, and therefore when the house is done, I will be occupying that house or whenever. I think it will assist us moving forward in making sure as well that we also involve the community in say in guarding the pro the, this infrastructure, in guarding these projects to making sure that they get to fruition and they get to benefit. So it is some of the things that we have started to introduce to make sure that we curb this um, tendency of people just invading the houses. Mm -hmm. Some could argue, Mr. Dao, that the criminal elements that start to creep in is because there are weaknesses in the system and the weakness being the pace in this respect, from what I'm gathering, that the pace has been too slow and there have been those that have taken advantage of that, including the current ones who have been sending an SMS saying people who applied in 1996 must come and collect the keys for their homes. Talk to me about that SMS. Uh, look, it is unfortunate that there's a SMS making the rounds in the province, especially here in Swane, um, where people are encouraged to come and collect the keys for their houses. And it is a scam. It's a common scam. It happens sometimes, you know, um, um, at various stages. And people are exploiting the desperation of our people because people are desperate for their houses. They know that people's houses have always also been accused and we've seen in some instances where people, the rightful beneficiaries are sitting with um, happy letters us and they are not the ones in those houses. So for that reason, I do think that scam fraudsters have realized that people, once they get an SMS like that, they would run. And we live in a country where we have institutionalized, um, you know, co corruption and maladministration to a point where people would want to go and pay. And these scam stars, that's what they are hoping for. They know that people will be willing to go out and pay so that they jump the queue. And therefore, they might believe that they have the right person to assist. But in terms of these SMSs, we really want to warn the community that we will communicate directly with beneficiaries when um, they are to benefit from a housing uh, a, a, a project where they are benefiting a house. Um, we have the national consolidated national housing um, um, needs register um, that came through in 2008, and therefore the Form C is not necessarily something that is required. We know who the beneficiaries are, and we contact them directly. And once that that process has been done, we guide people. Um, as to how would they then go about up to a point where they find themselves in the house that is um, allocated to them. Um, and one thing that I do think the community needs to look at you know, when you see some of these flyers and SMSs, is that um, you'd realize that you would have some spelling errors, you know, the sentences are not constructed well and all of these things. That's when you pick up that this is a scam because when it comes to official government communication, other than we communicating directly with the beneficiary, 
would also speak through the media as well as releasing official statements to ensure that people are aware what we are doing. And therefore, we really, really, really want to urge communities not to respond to such, um, you know, you, you know, SMSs. All right, Mr. Dow, thank you very much for that. Actually, before we let you go, can you just give us an update on the Mamelodi flood victims and their relocation? What's the latest there? Look, on the Mamelodi flood victims, we are pleased to say um, province has acquired the land. We are in the process of registering it. It will be given over to us as the city of Tuani in terms of the bilaterals that we are having with province. Um, and we are grateful for the work that MEC Maile has done in, together with us. When we work together, we are able to resolve difficult challenges. The next step of that is obviously once that process has been concluded, then we will convene the community, especially those beneficiaries, to then relate to them the relocation plan which we are currently working on and from that point we would then be moving people over to um those the, the area that 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 we have we have acquired for them what will happen and i have always been on record to say in the new financial year which starts today it's when we would be fast tracking most of these processes we are hoping that by the start of the next rainy season around october we should have relocated people or we should have been very hard at relocating people I don't think that um, November will come when the people are still sitting in the flat plains where they are. We are working very hard, and that's our priority, to make sure that we move people before winter ends and we sit with another um, tragedy. All right. No, that's actually good to hear. There's a lot of progress. And we love the new relationship, saying that you're grateful and you've worked well with MEC Lebohang Maile. We remember that relationship with councillors in Swan. It was a very difficult one uh, a while back, not so long ago. But thank you very much for your time. That's MMC for Housing in the city of Swan. Abel Dow.